Amen. Wanasifiwe. It's really good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. How many of you would rather be here this morning rather than be in a hospital? Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, before, you, before you sit down, uh, I'd like us to confess uh, one of my favorite uh, con con confessions from the word of the Lord. Uh, in 2 Timothy uh, chapter 4, and verse number 18, the Apostle Paul is giving testimony of the challenges that he had faced in his life. Uh, the mountains he had to move, and the people who came against him. And through it all, he's giving a testimony. And the Bible says that the word of the Lord that's in this Bible is our word. Every promise in this Bible is our promise. So the words that the Apostle Paul spoke, these are our words. And, and I want us to, to confess with the Apostle Paul. Um, he says, verse number 18, And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work. And I want everyone in the church to confess this for yourself. This is not now for the Apostle Paul. He's talking about you. For the same God that delivered him from every evil work, he's here today. To deliver, to deliver you and me from every evil work. And you know, when you confess and you speak the word of God, the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and by hearing of the word of God. It didn't say where you have to hear it from. You may as well, you, you hear it, of course, from, uh, from the pastor, from preaching, by reading for yourself. But above all, when you speak the word, it builds the faith of God in you. So everyone say, for the, and the Lord shall deliver me. From every evil work. From every evil work. Now, I, I want you to think about this. How many does every include? All? All? Yes. Now think about it. God is promising you that he will deliver you from how many evil works? All. All of it. Every evil work. So I want you to say, that, like you really believe it, that this is going to happen. So I want to take one finger and point at yourself. And say, and the Lord shall deliver me. And the Lord shall deliver me. From every evil work. From every evil work. Now I want you to confess this for your family. Say, and the Lord shall deliver my family. And the Lord shall deliver my family. From every evil work. From every evil work. Now I want you to confess for your finances. Amen. Amen. Say, and the Lord shall deliver my finances. And the Lord shall deliver my finances. From every evil work. From every evil work. Hallelujah. Amen. And I want you now to confess for your health. The devil is a thief and is a liar. Yes. He will not steal your health. Yes. See, and the Lord, and the Lord shall deliver me. And the Lord shall deliver me from. Oh, sorry, we are we are confessing for our health. Yes. And the Lord shall deliver my health. And the Lord shall deliver my health from every evil work. From every evil work. Hallelujah. Amen. Now let's confess for our church. Amen. Amen. Say, and the Lord shall deliver our church. And the Lord shall deliver our church from every evil work. From every evil work. Hallelujah. Amen. If you believe it, shout Amen to the Lord. Amen. You, you need to sit here. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Let me begin by expressing my appreciation for the opportunity that uh, Bishop Kimani and Pastor Alice have given me to come back uh, here at uh, Deliverance Church, uh, Zimmerman, to fellowship with you and uh, to share with you the word of the Lord. Uh, we are very honored to have been wonderful friends for many years since we were young people. Uh, and throughout the year, it's really a great blessing to see what God has done. The great work he has done through uh, this great servant of God, Bishop Jimmy Kemani, uh, starting this church many years ago uh, from just a few. And, ju and now to be here today in this celebration service, to see three powerful services every Sunday, 
all the glory to God. Amen. Amen. He is uh, a great uh, man of God. It's always a joy when he comes to visit with us. As he said, we were with him and Pastor Alice last year in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, we are very blessed to know, uh, to know them. And uh, you are more blessed than us because God has given you to him as a gift, as his prophet, to bless you. So can we appreciate the prophet of God? Amen. Let me also bring greetings from my wife, Reverend Waboy Jeroge. Uh, he told me that when I come to the church today to make sure that I bring her greetings from Georgia. In the U.S., you receive her greetings. Amen. Now, I want to share with you the word of the Lord. And the title of my message this morning is... The God of second chance, or oh, he's a God of second chance. The second title of my message this morning is Getting Out of Lodibar. The scripture we are reading from is found in 2 Samuel chapter 9 and verse number 1. Uh, let's, re let's look at this wonderful story of a young man and see what the Lord will speak to us through this uh, experience. Second Samuel chapter 9 and verse number 1. And David said, Is there yet any that is left of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? Verse number 2. And there was of the house of Saul, a servant whose name was Ziba, and when they had called him unto David, the king said unto him, Art thou Ziba? And he said, The servant is he. Verse 3. And the king said, Is there not yet any of the house of Saul that I may show the kindness of God unto him? And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan has yet a son, which is lame on his feet. Verse number four. And the king said unto him, Where is he? And Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he is in the house of Machir, the son of Amiel, in the Lodibar. Everyone say Lodibar. Lodibar. Verse number five. The king, then King David sent, and fetched him out of the house of Machir, the son of Amiel, from Lodibar. That's it. Now, when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was come unto David, he fell on his face and did reference. And David said, Mephibosheth. And he answered, Behold, the son. Verse number seven. And David said unto him, Fear not, for I will surely show thee kindness for Jonathan thy father's sake, and will restore thee all the land of Saul thy father, and thou shalt eat bread at my table continually. And, and I want us to note a few things here as we continue reading the story. So David, the first thing that David said to this young man, Fear not. And this is always the message God gives us as we face any circumstance. We, you know, when faith comes in, faith casts out fear. When fear comes in, then faith gets out. And so the first thing Jesus always told the people when they came to him for healing, it is fear not, only believe. Fear not, only believe. And God is saying to each one of us this morning, fear not. Have faith in God, therefore only believe. Fear not, only believe. Now that's the first thing. And then the next thing I want you to know, that the king said, I will show you kindness or a favor for Jonathan, your father's sake. And the second thing he said, the third thing he said, I will restore all the lands of Saul, your father or your grandfather. And the, and, the, and, and the final thing he said, And thou shalt eat bread 
at my table continually. So verse number 8, And he bowed himself and said, What is thy servant, that thou should look upon him such a dead dog as I am? Verse number 9, And when the king called to Ziba, so servant, and said unto him, I have given unto thy servant's son all that pertained to Saul and to all his heart. Thou therefore and thy sons and thy servants shall till the land for him, and thou shalt bring in the fruit that thy master's son may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, thy master's son, shall eat bread always at my table. Now Ziba had fifteen sons and twenty servants. Verse number eleven. Then said Ziba unto the king, According to all that my lord the king hath commanded his servant, so shall thy servant do. As for Mephibosheth, said the king, he shall eat at my table as one of the king's sons. Verse number twelve. And Mephibosheth had a young son whose name was Micha. And all that dwelt in the house of Ziba were servants unto Mephibosheth. Verse 13. So Mephibosheth dwelt in Jerusalem, for he did eat continually at the king's table and was lame on both his feet. Let's bow our heads and go before the Lord and ask the Lord to bless his word. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you once again this morning to thank you, to bless you, to praise you because of your presence in this sanctuary. Father, we thank you because of the anointing of the Holy Spirit that is in this place. And I pray that, Father, you touch each one of us, every person that is within the hearing of this voice, minister to them this morning, open our hearts and our thoughts and our minds to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to each one of us at this time. Help us, Father, to design the word for the season and the word for the hour that will help transform us, build us, and renew us. Our Father, I'm praying that you anoint the ears to hear and that you anoint each one of us, Father, with a divine revelation so that we get to know even deeper things as we hear the word even beyond that which we are speaking here this afternoon i pray that i will speak directly from the mind of christ and the word will speak directly to the needs of your people i pray this for living it's done and everybody say amen amen, amen. so the message today is that our God is God of second chance or getting out of Lodiba. You know, another way of looking at this message is that you can hit a restart button again. That God's power and promises are such that even when things do not seem to be going your way, God has always availed an opportunity where we can hit a restart button again. So, looking at this story, the story of Mephibosheth is an amazing story. A young man who lost everything through no fault of his own. Things kept on getting from bad to worse. It's not because of anything he did, things just happened, you know, kept on happening in a bad way for him. His grandfather, the king of Israel, King Saul, was killed. Somebody brought a report and, and, and told this young man, your grandfather, the king of Israel, was just killed today. Then another man came, gave him a report, and told him that your dad, your father, Jonathan, was also killed the same day. And then he was stricken with the grief and the pain of losing both his grandfather and his father at the same time. And they also told him that a new king in Israel had been installed, King David. And all the lands and the property 
of his grandfather the king had all been taken away. In one swing, he had lost everything. And because of that pain, he fell off a balcony, and when he fell off, he broke both his legs. Now I want you to think about it. He's lost his grandfather, he has lost his father, and as though that is not enough, you know, they have a saying that when it rains, it pours. Sometimes things can start when, when a tsunami comes, it hits everything. It, it, the storm can get so bad, and you think it's not going to get worse, but sometimes it gets worse. These are the challenges we face in life. Think about this young man, how bad things go. Then he falls down and he broke, he broke two of his feet and he becomes lame. He becomes a cripple. And somebody you took him, a man, by the, a man by the name of Ziba, and he was taken out of the king's palace in Jerusalem and he went very far away uh, to a place called Lodiba. A little town. And for him, Lodiba represented total loss. Lodiba represented poverty, hopelessness, no chance. He had given up. Can you imagine how it is like to, be, to, to come all the way from living as a son of the, as a prince in the palace of the king, pampered, taken care of, and losing everything to a point of where you cannot even walk on your two feet. And did you know that those days they did not have wheelchairs? If you are crippled those days, you had to just crawl on the floor or somebody will have to carry you. And he had hit the bottom. If somebody told him that have hope, things can change, the people should, would have never believed it. But I'm here to tell you, God's people, that no matter how far or how hard the enemy hits us, sometimes the devil will hit you, circumstances of life will hit you, and the devil will think he has knocked you down, and that is a final blow, and you will never wake up again. But I have good news for you. That even if the enemy hit you, hit your family, hit your marriage, hit your money, your finances, your businesses, I'm telling you there is hope because somebody is going to remember you. Somebody is going to, is going to remember you. Even when you are down, that's what the Bible says, my enemy, rejoice not when I have fallen because one of these days I'm going to rise up. One of these days I'm coming up and devil you cannot stop me from rising up. Hallelujah. The young man was down, out of his luck, no hope. He was in Lodiba, hopeless. But back in Jerusalem, everybody say back in Jerusalem. Something was starting up. Something was happening. Hallelujah. Somebody was taking care of him, although he did not know. So King David, he remembered something. He remembered that he had a covenant with Jonathan. He remembered something called what? A covenant. Let me tell you, a covenant is very powerful. A covenant is transformative. A covenant has power. A covenant has authority. And King David remembered the covenant he had with Jonathan. And when he remembered that covenant, he said, I want to bless somebody because of this covenant in the house of Jonathan. But they kept on telling him, everybody's gone. They don't have anybody else. And he kept on asking, isn't there anyone I can bless? Isn't it wonderful when God is looking at you and when God is taking care of you and thinking about you even when you are forgotten in Lodiba? A child of God cannot be truly forgotten because you have somebody in heaven thinking about you. You have somebody in heaven interceding for you, praying for you, no matter what you go through. Amen? So King David said, 
He's still there somebody. So finally Ziba came and said, yeah, I remember. You see, he was crippled, he was a nobody. That is why nobody could remember him. But the Ziba finally said, oh yeah. There is a young man, son of Jonathan, but he's crippled and he is in Lodiba. But King King David said, go and bring him to Jerusalem. Oh, yes. oh hallelujah. I, I, I'm telling you, the day King David sent for Mephibosheth to come to Jerusalem, that is the day his whole life and his destiny was changed. It was the day God decided because of the covenant that David had with Jonathan, the life of this young man was going to be restored. So that is why he came and in verse number 7, if you look at verse number 7, the Bible says, And David said unto him, Fear not. Fear not. Now, you, you, you have to understand this. In the ancient Middle East, for founders of new dynasties, it was not unusual for them to kill the children of a former rulers. Because they were scared that if they do not eliminate the whole family, one of them may come later to claim the throne in the name of their family. So when the young man heard that the king was calling him, well, his first thought is that, oh, I'm going to get blessed. Uh -uh. His first thought, oh, 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 they're going to have my head cut off. They want to kill me. And so he was trembling and shaking when he came to the palace. But the king, king rose up and he told him, fear not. Fear not. Oh, hallelujah. If we knew all the time what God Almighty has in store for us because of the covenant that you and I have through Jesus Christ, the covenant of blood is powerful. Because of that covenant, we should not fear. We should be courageous. We should be bold. We should live our lives with gusto and with energy because we have a covenant keeping God. Amen? So he says to this young man, and David said unto him, Fear not, for I will surely show you kindness or a favor. For Jonathan, thy father's sake, and who restore thee all the land of Saul, thy father, and thou shalt eat bread at my table continually. Wow, talk about good news. Hallelujah. You see, to eat bread at the king's table was such a great honor, and this was not considered a temporary honor. It meant that a person would receive permanent pension. That the king, the, the, the meaning of eating at the king's table means that the king will set apart a very high income that will be paid to that person for the rest of their lives. Let me tell you, dear child of God, we have a covenant with God, and through that covenant we have with the king of kings, that God has sent, has set aside for us a permanent pension. An income that you cannot see with your naked eyes. So that you, your life should not depend on how much money you have in your bank account. Amen? You should depend on that permanent income that God has kept for you. I want you to know, my sister, my brother, there is an account in heaven. It is kept for you because of the covenant. Every seed you have ever planted, there is an account kept for you. Every seed you have ever planted in the church, in the kingdom of God, for the work of God, there is an account for you in heaven. And God will never forget that account. And the more you serve the Lord, the more you serve God with commitment, the more you keep on planting and seeding in the kingdom of God, the bigger that account gets. Your other account might be, might be empty. 
But I want you to know that the heavenly account can in one word replenish your other account with a miraculous sweep. Amen? Amen? Amen. He is able to provide. Amen. So that's what he told him that he will eat at the king's table. You have that, you know, pension forever. You know, when he humbled himself and he fell at his feet, he said, why should you think about me? <coughs> Such a dead dog as I am. Imagine. Well, the king is looking at him not just as a lame, useless, useless person. He is looking at him in terms of the potential that he has. Because he is a child of the covenant. But when he is looking at hell, you know, either he did not know about the covenant that King David had with his father, that is called ignorance. It's very important for us to be knowledgeable about our covenant. Do you know there are so many covenants in the Bible? There is over seven covenants, if you, if, if, if you can start you know, counting. For example, there is what we call Adamic covenant. There is another covenant called Abrahamic covenant. There is another covenant called the Noah, Noah's covenant. Remember the covenant God made with Noah that I will never destroy the world with flood again? And you saw, and then there is the Vedic covenant, and so on and so on. But out of all these biblical covenants, the most powerful of all these covenants that we have, it is the blood covenant that was shed, the blood of the New Testament. This is the most powerful covenant because it is through that covenant that you and I, we were in Lodiba. We were totally lost. We had nothing and hopeless. But God remembered us. And every time we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior and live for Him, God always remembers the terms of that covenant and He implements that covenant on our behalf. It is a powerful covenant. It is a covenant written in the blood of the Lamb. It is a covenant the devil cannot destroy. It is a covenant the devil cannot withhold. It is a covenant Satan cannot defeat. It is so powerful that when the enemy sees the covenant of the blood, he runs away. In the name of Jesus Christ, because of the shed blood of Jesus, get out of my way. The devil has no, no other way but to run away from you. It's the most powerful covenant. It changed your life. It changed my life. Not just here or now. Because of the blood covenant, your destiny has been changed forever. Eternally. And if your destiny has been changed forever, eternally, what are the little problems we face here on earth? In the light of the blood covenant. You know, he died for us on the cross at Calvary. So that we can enter into the into this new, te new New Testament covenant, the new covenant, and in that death, he defeated the devil on our behalf. So that today, because of because of the blood covenant, the devil is under our feet. But sometimes we act as though we are under the feet of the devil. Munajua. Nyote ati shetani Ako katika nini? Anda wa chini ya migu yetu You are a child of God Come on, walk like it Think like it Pray like it Amen? Let's not forget How powerful the blood covenant is Hallelujah Even when you do not know God is always making a way for you because of the covenant you and him have. You know, it's amazing how sometimes God is thinking about us, preparing the way for us, even when ourselves, we are not aware. I remember one time when I first went to the United States at Bible School. My original destination was go to Tennessee to attend the University of Tennessee. 
And uh, when I got, but I first went to Los Angeles, ran out of my money, the little money I had, I could not fly to Knoxville. So I decided to take a bus. Uh, it's called, uh, it was called Greyhound. And uh, <laughs> I remember when I went to buy a ticket from Los Angeles to Knoxville, Tennessee. The lady, I, I had a hundred dollars remaining, and the lady uh, told me the ticket to Knoxville, Tennessee is ninety-seven dollars. And I gave her my one hundred dollars. She gave me back three dollars. So I asked her, "How far is it?" She told me it is two thousand seven hundred miles. I asked her, "How many days?" You know, it's pretty much of here. She said, "It will take three days and three nights." <laughs> <laughs> to get there. So, I went and, and I sat down, you know, and I'm thinking, all the money I have in the world is three dollars now. <laughs> and I have three nights and three days to travel, so I'm thinking, so, and what shall I eat? Oh, it occurred to me, of course, you know, flying to, to California from Kenya, they provided all the meals in the airplane. <laughs> So I thought, okay, this is America. Surely they provide meals in the bus. <laughs> Buses are America, Sika Mama Tatos. That's what I thought. So I went and asked the lady, uh, do you provide all the meals? <laughs> you know, lunch, you know, breakfast, lunch, dinner. Uh, she said, no. But she said, by the way, the driver will stop <laughs> along the way. <laughs> in the restaurant so that you can buy food for yourself. <laughs> so I went, you know, I went and sat on those, those chairs again. I thought, hey, so I have to, so, so I have to say, I'm gonna eat one dollar per day. <laughs> but that's not enough. And you know, and then just something occurred to me. I said, you know, I went to America with a vision. This was my vision. I'm going to get me a bachelor's degree. I'm going to get me a master's degree. I'm going to get me a PhD. Yes. But how much, I'm in America now, and how much money do I have in my pocket? Three dollars. So it takes a lot of faith to believe that you're going to be able to pay for a bachelor's degree, for a master's degree, for a PhD with three dollars. You know, I think I'm asking, if I'm believing God for that miracle, surely I can believe God that he can send me money to eat in the bus between here, Los Angeles, and Knoxville, Tennessee. So I pray, they say, in the name of Jesus, God, I pray that you provide the money I need to eat along the way until I get to Knoxville, Tennessee. So I'm praying, and I said, in Jesus' name, amen. And I'm here to give you a testimony. This is the truth, and my wife will tell you. I had a hand, when I said, amen, somebody tapped my shoulder. So I looked up, I saw a white lady, I didn't know her, never met, never seen her in my life, a very, very tall, beautiful young lady. Oh, he said, she said, excuse me, I overheard you at the counter buying a bus ticket to Knoxville, Tennessee. She said, my mother, who is old, is traveling in the same bus because she's afraid of lying. So... <laughs> So she asked me, could you help her with her luggages? And when you get to Tennessee, can you help her get into a taxi? And uh, she, she gave me some money, and it was $40. I, now, the first thing I started saying doing my little dancing, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. No, 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 God, I'm here in Los Angeles, people are looking at me, I don't care. That is the fastest prayer answer. God answers prayers. Because here I was very worried, but he was thinking about me because of the covenant. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. So, so we got in the bus, and as we were going in the bus, she introduced me to her old mother. So, 
Whenever I, I, I share this testimony in, in, in white churches in America, uh, white people come and tell me, Brother Joe, you think the miracle? <laughs> Is that that white lady gave you $40? They tell me, no, the miracle is that a white lady. Yeah. And that she will trust a black man with her old mother in Los Angeles. They said, Brother Joe, that's a miracle. <laughs> you know, the favor of God transcends your skin color. Anywhere you are in the world. You have the favor of God on you. So when people look at you, they don't, they don't see a black person. They see a child of God. It inspires confidence. Amen? Amen. So I introduced myself. I, uh, I, told, I told her uh, my name is uh, Reverend Joseph Njeroge. I'm a minister from Africa. And she said, Hallelujah! Yeah, I said, my name is Pastor Helen Chick. I said, praise God. Let me tell you, we started having a wonderful fellowship in that bus. So when the bus got into this place called Amarillo, Texas, they, they changed the drivers. And for, for many of you, like uh, Bishop Keman, you've been to America, you know sometimes the way they speak. Sometimes it's difficult to understand their accent. You know that. So, I think the driver said, <laughs> we are stopping for five minutes here, and then we're leaving. Yeah, I thought he said we're stopping for lunch. <laughs> and I have $40 to eat. <laughs> okay. So, I went to the restaurant. When you go to a new country, it's very confusing which food to order. So I saw chicken. Chicken is chicken. All over the world, right? They show you've gone all over the world. Chicken is chicken. Yeah. Who can they anywhere? What the chicken? Is yeah, chicken doesn't change. When they go to India, brother, the Indian chicken is chicken. So, <laughs> so I ordered chicken. I sat down to enjoy myself. Kumbe, everybody got back in the bus. They left me. My luggages, my suitcases, everything is in that bus. They, they went back to the freeway, interstate 40, they took off. <laughs> so this lady, Mrs. Helen Chick, she went and told the driver, I think you have left somebody that is supposed to be in this bus. There is a young minister from Africa that is supposed to go with us to Knoxville. You left him. Mm. Well, the driver says, ma'am, you know, that, that, that's our term of respect, ma'am. Uh, we are on schedule. We, we cannot turn back for anybody. No, 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 no. Mr. Selen said, no, you have to take off the next exit and go back and get him. Now, the bus is full of people, right? They just don't do that in America. They will not turn the bus for a one person. Uh, but this woman insisted. <laughs> because of the covenant. <laughs> because of the covenant. That driver finally said, ah, okay. So he went and took the next exit, and they went all the way back. Hey! Wakakuja? Or your restaurant? Now, I want you to think about this. <laughs> I was in so much deep trouble, but I didn't even know it. I was just enjoying my chicken. <laughs> they enjoyed my chicken. <laughs> but because of the covenant, God was taking care of me. Amen? Amen. But you can imagine their surprise. When they came to look for me and they saw me at the table, how are you been eating my chicken? <laughs> so that's when they told me what happened and I got in the bus. <laughs> All right. Because of the covenant. <laughs> oh, bless the Lord. 
Church, I want you to know that we have a covenant with God that does not depend on our strength or where we are coming from or what people say about us. No, it's a relationship we have with Jesus Christ. He's the King of Kings and he says that your destiny and your situation has been shifted. It's been changed. And therefore, no matter what you went through this the last year or this year, I want you to know he's a God of second chances. And he's ready to move in your behalf. Touch your circumstances. Change your situation, no matter what it is. Shall we all stand up before the Lord in the house of the King of Kings? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory to God. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we worship you. We magnify you. Hallelujah. There is no God like our God. There is no Lord like you. We bless you. We magnify you, O Lord. We worship you, King of Kings. We bless you because of your power and because of your anointing. We worship you. We magnify you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Lord. I want to pray for you uh, this morning. If you're here and you faced some challenges in your life, some circumstances, that sometimes you have felt like you're forgotten in Lord Abba. You Sometimes you felt like there is no hope for that situation. And I'm here to tell you that so long as you have breath in your life, there is hope. So long as you have breath in your, in your mouth, there is hope. God is God of second chance. And if you have faced some, whether it's financial situations that have been difficult, whether with your health, family, relationship, whatever it is, I want to believe God with you this morning. That God will change your circumstances. That God will enforce that covenant in a new way that he has with you. So if you're the one, can you raise up your hand where you are so that I can pray with you. All right. Thank you. Thank you all. Hallelujah. Let's go before the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to lift up every brother and every sister that have their hand lifted. Every situation every circumstance, may it financial, may it marital relationship, or children, may it health. We are in the presence of a miracle working God. We are in the presence of God of second chances. Even if they have failed, even if they missed the mark, wash them, forgive them, remember them. Remember them because of the covenant that they have with you this morning, O oh Lord. I pray that Father, you touch each person with your power. Lord, those that are facing mountains that are difficult to move, in the name of Jesus, I command that mountain to be moved. Those who are facing challenges that in the, in the natural they found it impossible to deal with, you are a miracle God. Father, touch them. Move with your miracle power this morning. Move in their behalf. Let them see the grace of God. Manifest your glory and your power in their lives. In the name of Jesus. Let them receive. Come on, now go ahead and receive it by faith. Get it, get it. It's yours. Come on, take it. Take it. Take it. Take it by faith. It is yours. Receive it. Receive it. Come on, give the Lord that praise. Hallelujah. Give the Lord that praise. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Have you received it? Yes. Is it yours? Yes. Are you going to take it by faith? Yes. Will you let the devil steal it from you? No. Come on, say no. No. Say it's mine. It's mine. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May God bless you. You may be seated.